what I hope to do in this video is give ourselves some practice interpreting statements and writing them as mathematical expressions, possibly using parentheses. So let's get started. And for any of these statements, if you get so inspired, and I encourage you to get so inspired, pause the video and see if you can write them as mathematical expressions. So this first one says 700 minus 19 divided in half. So we could say, we, another way to think about divided in half is divided by two. So we could write this as 709 minus 19, and we're going to do that first, so that's why I put the parentheses around it, divided by two, or divided in half. That's one way that we could write this. Now the next one, and once again, pause it if you get inspired, and I encourage you to. Three times the sum of 56 and seven. So it's going to be three times the sum of 56 and seven. So the sum of 56 and seven, we want to take that first. So it's going to be 56 plus seven. That's the sum of 56 and seven. And then we want to do three times that. We want to do three times this sum. So we could write it, we could write it like that. Another way we could write it, when you're dealing with parentheses, and you're going to see this more and more as you get into uh, more and more fancy algebra, I guess you could say, but what I'm about to show you isn't so fancy, is you don't have to write the multiplication sign here. You could just write three and then open parentheses, 56 plus seven, 56, 56 plus seven, and this too is three times the sum of 56 and seven. And you want to be very careful, because you might be tempted to maybe do it without the parentheses, so you might be tempted to do something like this. Three times, three times 56, 56 plus seven. But this one isn't obviously three times the sum of 56 and seven. In fact, the standard way to interpret this is that you would do the multiplication first. You would do three times 56 and then add seven, which is going to give you a different value, and you could try it out, than if you were to add the 56 and the seven first. So to make sure that you do the 56 and the seven first, you want to put this parentheses around it. So let's keep going. The sum of three times 56 and seven. So we're going to take the sum of two things. So we're going to take the sum of two things. The first thing that we're going to take the sum of is three times 56. So three times 56 and seven. And, and let me do that in a different color. And seven. And seven. So this right over here is the sum of three times 56 and seven. Now it's always good to write the parentheses. It makes it a little bit cleaner, a little bit more obvious. That, look, I'm going to take the three times 56, I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to add seven. But based on what I just told you, the standard way, if you were someone were to just write three times 56 plus seven, plus, let me write it, three times 56. If someone were to just write this, three times 56 plus seven, this actually can still be interpreted as the sum of three times 56 and seven. Because as I just said, the standard, the convention, so to speak, is to do your multiplication first, order of operations, which you may or may not, but if you're not familiar, you will be familiar with it soon, is to do the multiplication first and then add the seven, or then do the addition. But just to make it clear, it doesn't hurt to put the parentheses there. Three times 56 plus seven. Now we have 43 minus the sum of 16 and 11. So 43 minus, so we're gonna have 43 minus, minus the sum of 16 and 11. So minus the sum of 16 and 11. So from 43, we're gonna take the sum of 16 and 11. And so once again, the parentheses make it clear that we're going to take the sum of 16 and 11, and we're going to take that from 43. Parentheses are very, very, very important here. Because if we just did 43, 43 minus 16, minus 16 plus 11, the standard way of interpreting this would be 43 minus 16, and then adding 11, which would give you a different value than 43 minus the sum of 16 and 11. So once again, the parentheses are very, very, very important here to, to emphasize, or to, to make it clear that you're gonna add the 16 and 11 first, and then subtract that sum from 43. 
This is fun. Let's keep going. 10 times the quotient of 104 and 8. So we're going to do 10 times something. 10 times the quotient of 104 and 8. And so the quotient of 104 and 8, we could write like this. 104 divided by divided by 8. Or based on what we told you a little earlier, you could write this as 10 times the quotient, the quotient of 104 and 8, or 104 divided by divided by 8. Now let's just do this last one. Four times as large. So four, four times as large as the expression, as the expression 175 minus 58. So I'm going to do four times as large as something. So I'm going to multiply something times four. And I'm going to multiply it's four times as large as the expression 175 minus 58. 175 minus 58. And once again, I could write it as four times, four times as large as the expression, let me do that in that purple color, as the expression 175 minus 175 minus 58 either way and once again if you were to do it like this if you weren't right if you weren't didn't write the parentheses then it wouldn't be the same thing because if the parentheses weren't here then you would want to do the 4 times 175 first and then subtract the 58 which isn't what the statement is telling us and this last one i think brings up an interesting thing for us to think about because if someone were to walk up walk up to you on the street and they were to show you whoops what's going on with my computer and they were to show you two different expressions. And the, well, the first expression said, said two, let's write it this way. Actually, I'm not going to speak them out. I'm just going to write it down. I'm just going to write some, some crazy number here. Some crazy, some crazy numbers here. So that's one expression that someone were to write. And let's say another one is this one. And I'm intentionally, oh, wait, I put the commas in the wrong place. On, let, me, let me make sure I get this right. All right, that's 183,576. This is 37,399. So that's one expression. And then another expression is this. And I'm intentionally not reading it out. Well, I'll read it out a little bit. 37,399. If someone said, quick, which expression is larger? And you might be tempted, or you might not be tempted, but you might be tempted, oh, let me calculate this thing. Gee, I'm going to have to write this thing down or use a calculator or something or whatever else to add 183,576 plus 37,399. And then I'm have to multiply that by 2 and figure out what that number is equal to. And then I would have to take 183,576 plus 37,399, figure out what that is, multiply that by 7 and figure out what that's going to be. That's, that's hard. That's going to take, not hard, it's just going to take you some time. You might make some careless mistakes. But the big realization to say, well, which one is larger? Well, I don't have to even calculate these things. Because this is two times this, this craziness right over here, this thing that's going to be 200 something thousand. And this is seven times that thing that is going to be 200 and something thousand. So seven times that thing is going to be larger than two times that thing. And so one way to, you know, before you dive deep and start computing things, it's always good to take a step back and say, hey, look, can I look at kind of how the expressions are formed, the structure of these expressions, and say, look, this is, this is two times this thing, and this is seven times this thing. Well, the seven is going to be, this one right over here is going to be, is going to be a larger expression. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that as much as I did. What I hope to do in this video is give ourselves some practice interpreting statements and writing them as mathematical expressions, possibly using parentheses. So let's get started. And for any of these statements, if you get so inspired, and I encourage you to get so inspired, pause the video and see if you can write them as mathematical expressions. So this first one says 700 minus 19 divided in half. So we could say, we, another way to think about divided in half is divided by 2. So we could write this as 709 minus 19. And we're going to do that first. So that's why I put the parentheses around it. Divided by 2, or divided in half. That's one way that we could write this. Now the next one, 
And once again, pause it if you get inspired, and I encourage you to. Three times the sum of 56 and 7. So it's going to be three times the sum of 56 and 7. So the sum of 56 and 7, we want to take that first. So it's going to be 56 plus 7. That's the sum of 56 and 7. And then we want to do three times that. We want to do three times this sum. So we could write it, we could write it like that. Another way we could write it, when you're dealing with parentheses, and you're going to see this more and more as you get into uh, more and more fancy algebra, I guess you could say, but what I'm about to show you isn't so fancy, is you don't have to write the multiplication sign here. You could just write 3 and then open parentheses, 56 plus 7, 56, 56. 56 plus 7. And this too is 3 times the sum of 56 and 7. And you want to be very careful, because you might be tempted to maybe do it without the parentheses. So you might be tempted to do something like this. 3 times, 3 times 56, 56 plus 7. But this one isn't obviously 3 times the sum of 56 and 7. In fact, the standard way to interpret this is that you would do the multiplication first. You would do 3 times 56 and then add 7. which is going to give you a different value, and you could try it out, than if you were to add the 56 and the 7 first. So to make sure that you do the 56 and the 7 first, you want to put this parentheses around it. So let's keep going. The sum of 3 times 56 and 7. So we're going to take the sum of two things. So we're going to take the sum of two things. The first thing that we're going to take the sum of is 3 times 56. So 3 times 56 and 7. And, and let me do that in a different color. And 7. And 7. So this right over here is the sum of 3 times 56 and 7. Now, it's always good to write the parentheses. It makes it a little bit cleaner, a little bit more obvious. That, look, I'm going to take the 3 times 56. I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to add 7. But based on what I just told you, the standard way, if you were someone were to just write 3 times 56 plus 7 plus, let me write it, 3 times 56. If someone were to just write this, 3 times 56 plus 7. This actually can still be interpreted as the sum of 3 times 56 and 7. Because as I just said, the standard, the convention, so to speak, is to do your multiplication first, order of operations, which you may or may not, but if you're not familiar, you will be familiar with it soon, is to do the multiplication first and then add the 7, or then do the addition. But just to make it clear, it doesn't hurt to put the parentheses there, 3 times 56 plus 7. Now we have 43. Minus the sum of 16 and 11. So 43 minus, so we're going to have 43 minus, minus the sum of 16 and 11. So minus the sum of 16 and 11. So from 43, we're going to take the sum of 16 and 11. And so once again, the parentheses make it clear that we're going to take the sum of 16 and 11, and we're going to take that from 43. Parentheses are very, very, very important here. Because if we just did 43, 43 minus 16, minus 16 plus 11, the standard way of interpreting this would be 43 minus 16. And then adding 11, which would give you a different value than 43 minus the sum of 16 and 11. So once again, the parentheses are very, very, very important here to, to emphasize or to, to make it clear that you're going to add the 16 and 11 first and then subtract that sum from 43. This is fun. Let's keep going. 10 times the quotient of 104 and 8. So we're going to do 10 times something. 10 times. The quotient of 104 and 8. And so the quotient of 104 and 8, we can write like this. 104 divided by, divided by 8. Or based on what we told you a little earlier, you could write this as 10 times the quotient, the quotient of 104 and 8. Or 104 divided by, divided by 8. Now let's just do this last one. Four times as large. So four, four times as large 
as the expression, as the expression 175 minus 58. So I'm going to do four times as large as something. So I'm going to multiply something times four. And I'm going to multiply, it's four times as large as the expression 175 minus 58. 175 minus 58. And once again, I could write it as four times, four times as large as the expression, let me do that in that purple color, as the expression 175 minus 175 minus 58. Either way. And once again, if you were to do it like this, if you weren't right, if you weren't didn't write the parentheses, then it wouldn't be the same thing. Because if the parentheses weren't here, then you would want to do the four times 175 first and then subtract the 58, which isn't what the statement is telling us. And this last one, I think, brings up an interesting thing for us to think about. Because if someone were to walk up, walk up to you on the street and they were to show you, whoops, what's going on with my computer? And they were to show you two different expressions. And the, well, the first expression said, said two, let's write it this way. Actually, I'm not going to even speak them out. I'm just going to write it down. I'm just going to write some, some crazy number here. Some crazy, some crazy numbers here. So that's one expression that someone were to write. And let's 